So Lumi, a lot of our listeners are either on their first investment or looking for that first investment, you know, and there's, there's so many things running through their mind. Can you just talk us through one of your first investments and and let them know that it wasn't perfect? (laughs) Like, let's talk through like, you know, we don't have to embarrass you here, but let's talk through some of the maybe early pain points and, and how we overcame those. Great question. So I have a, I have several examples. Uh, I think one was a fail from start to begin, but that was, I was really green. So I don't think that's the best example. Um, I'm going to give you an example of a four flat I bought in 2012. So mm-hmm. I already had a number of property. I lost them all in 2010. So I was starting rebuilding, buying new properties. Um, I just, uh, when I lost everything, I remember sitting down and thinking what, you know, analyzing uh, what I learned from from the loss, right? I said, why nobody else went, I mean, a lot of people were going to foreclosure, but not everybody, if you know what I'm saying. Most of the houses that were going to foreclosure were single families, condos, maybe two flats, but three and four units or five plus, they're not that many, if you think about it. They're like, they're, they're maybe 1% compared to the rest, one for every hundred uh, houses. And noticing uh, uh, this information, I kept looking and I realized, remembering, you know, I'm not sorry that I lost all this money. I'm sorry that I lost, I worked 80 hour weeks for 10 years and I haven't seen my kids growing up because I was leaving home when they were sleeping, I was coming back when they were sleeping. That's what I was losing. So I realized financial independence was the number one thing. So I started looking at, at cash flow. That was my first time when I realized cash flow importance, when I realized time is more important than money. Right, but I had to lose all this money and all this time to understand that. So I, uh, so I remember sitting down talking to uh, the 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 notion of cash flow coming through, and I I picked up the phone, I called the lender. FHAs were not done until like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Not that they were not done, but there were no money down loans. Why would you do an FHA? All right, with all the paperwork and the headaches, and calling my my uh, one of my lender, and I said, hey, I think I got it. I know I have to wait two years but can I buy a 10 unit? And he sat for a second. I mean, he knew that I was bankrupt foreclosure, short sale, you know, like I have nothing, right? And he says, uh, I thought you were not making money. I said, well, you know, I'm selling $15,000 condos. I make 500 bucks per commission. And he says, well, you are going to need 25% down payment. And I thought, well, how does the rest of the people buy them? And he said, well, you could buy up to four units with FHA loan. So I thought, can I buy a building where I can live for free? So I didn't know about house hacking or anything. I thought I invented it, okay? So here it is. This is how how smart I think I am, right? So I tell the guy and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could live for free. And he says, yeah, you could do that, I guess. I said, well, what do I need? He gives me the list. Now I'm so happy, right? I just discovered financial freedom, you want to call it. And uh, I start looking at properties. I think I looked on, on paper, uh, maybe 20 properties. Within two months, I buy one. I saw only two because I was looking at the numbers. If the numbers didn't work, I didn't go to look at properties. So one property shows up in Forest Park. I run to the property like the moment it hit the MLS. Uh, the agent is there. The seller is there, interestingly enough. And I keep telling them how much I love the property. I mean, I've been a realtor for 10 years. You, you'll think that I know better than that, right? Not to tell the, the, the other side how much I like the property. And then they say, yeah, we have a few other uh, um, buyers coming through. And I say, well, can you cancel them all? I'll give you whatever you want. And then, you know, I'm saying these things, these words are my mom. I'm like, what am I saying? And the guy's like, well, can you make it as is? And I'm like, uh, sure, I want it. Because in my mind, it's like, it's the first property that numbers work, right? So that will... <laughs> will proceed everything. So I, I wrote an Aziz offer. Um, I write the contract. Actually, we end up giving him over asking price. Then I have the inspection. I discover a lot of issues. They wouldn't negotiate. I had an appraiser. The property does not appraise. I waive my commission to, to make the numbers work. Um, and listen to this. I hired an, an 203K because I ended up doing a 203K FHA. I had a two or three K guy and the inspector. So I paid the inspector $100,000 when he will do the same work as the two or three K consultant. So think about how much money I'm saving right now, my clients, right? Cause they don't have to pay twice for, uh, for anyone. But at that time I spent a thousand dollar extra. Then I still don't negotiate anything in inspection. Cause I'm just afraid that I'm going to lose a deal. I end up bringing cash at closing. And then when we close, I realized I didn't ask a lot of questions about tenants. I didn't um, really like, I didn't really look at the property the right way. The way I looked at it was like, it's a gold property, the numbers work. So I think I overpaid by tens of thousands of dollars on that property when I bought it. I'll tell you right now, I could have probably 
um, gain a lot out of it. Then I end up with the tenant, which I think later on I realized that I think they sold it because of this tenant. She was just a problem tenant. She was calling you every day, three times a day. She heard noise in the wall. There was a cat or what a mouse. I don't know where. Nobody else in the building hears about it, but she's the one that's the only one hearing. I mean, there are so many issues with this tenant. And I, I think I learned a lot from, from that trans, uh, transaction and how to really ask questions, I would say.